In this video, I'm gonna show you how to merge two photographs together into one using a double exposure inside Photoshop. It's quite a complicated process, but once you've practiced it a couple times, it will become quite easy. The trick is knowing which images to use to create the best double exposures. So I'm using two different photos here. One is a profile view portrait, and the other is an image of some trees. The trees are going to be blended into this portrait photograph, so it looks like it's coming out of the back of someone's head. It's a very popular style of double exposure photography, and it's all going to take place right here inside Photoshop. You can create this same double exposure effect in software other than Photoshop, but that's what I use because it comes with my Creative Cloud plan. You could probably do it inside Photoshop Elements, which is a one-time purchase, and GIMP, which stands for GNU Image Manipulation Program, which is a free version of Photoshop effectively. So let's get started. I've chosen two images here. This is a profile view of a lady with a small afro. And then we also have some trees in the fog. I'll come to why that tree photo is important later, but let's get started by dragging the photo into Photoshop. So that's opened up in Photoshop. While I'm still here, I'm also going to drag in this tree photograph and I'm going to leave it there, but then I'm going to disable the layer like that. So I'm no longer viewing that image or working with it. To get started, I'm going to select the background layer. I'm going to right click and click layer from background. I'm going to name this lady and then I want to cut her out of this background. I want to remove the background. The best way I've found to do this is to select this quick selection tool up here. You can do this by pressing W and then select her body. And as you can see when I zoom in here, you can see that it's selected a pretty good job of going around her body. Photoshop's gotten better and better at this, but it doesn't really know what to do with the hair. Don't worry about that. We'll come back to that in a moment. You just want to check and make sure that it's gone around every part of her body. There is a little bit of a gap here on her chest where you can see the white background. We're going to keep that in because that's going to be incredibly difficult to remove and it's not going to add to the photo really at all otherwise. I'm going to go back and I'm just going to select this little bit of her chin that's not being captured. And okay, Photoshop's done a pretty good job of this, so now I'm gonna go and select and mask. What this will allow me to do, if I select this tool up here, you can press R and it's the Refine Edge Brush, it's going to allow me to go through and go around the edges that do not quite capture her hair perfectly. And I'm gonna zoom out just so you can see this. And a quick tip, if you hold down the Alt or the Option key on a Mac, um, it's the, sorry, it's the Option key on a Mac and an Alt key on a Windows. If you hold this down, it's going to invert what your tool is doing. So currently this is a zoom in. If I press the Option or Alt key, it's going to zoom out. That's useful for later on when you want to switch quickly between zooming in and zooming out. So I've selected this Refine Edge Brush tool and then by using the brackets on my keyboard, the brackets, not the parentheses, by using the brackets, I can increase the size or decrease. You can also select that up here if you'd like. By using that, I'm going to make this brush around the size of this area that's not being added to the image properly. And I'm just gonna go around her hair. And what this is going to do is it's going to tell Photoshop that, hey, you've missed some parts here. Go back and check for something that's not standing out properly and it's going to make it look a little bit blurred as it goes around the image. But as soon as you release, it's going to do a better selection. And we can zoom back in, it's gonna make that sharp again. So it's not going to show the selection very clearly here at least. Um, but what we can do is now that we've selected this, and I know that I've got um, the outline of a body, I'm gonna to go to output settings down here, and I'm gonna go to open this up and output to new layer with layer mask and then hit OK. And now we've cut out her body. So that's really simple and easy to do. 
There are many different ways to draw around something inside Photoshop and then you can just apply a layer mask to remove it. Now let's have a look at the image that is on the top layer, which is these trees. Now you see this little icon here in the bottom right hand corner of the image and the layers. That means that it's a smart object. It allows you to apply non-destructive edits to this photograph. The next step is to remove this background image of the lady and have a new background image, which is just going to be one plain color for now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to layer, new fill layer, and then solid color. And I'm going to enter solid color and I'm going to select a, let's select a peachy pink here. And I'm going to move this down to underneath her body. So we can see this stands out here. I'm not going to use pink for this photograph, but I'm just using it as a background so I can easily see what's going on here. And then I'm going to go to this drop down here for the blending mode, and I'm going to go to multiply. So now we have both of those images showing at once, and we also have the background color too. So before I continue any further with this, I want to take these trees and put them where I think they're going to go best inside this photograph. So I'm going to hit transform for this. Now this will be control or command T. This will allow me to transform the image. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. I'm going to hit this link icon up here to keep that same aspect ratio. And then I'm going to move it so that it's going over her hair. So it's over the hair that I want to replace with these trees. And let's have a look there. If we see, I think that looks pretty good. I'm going to adjust the rotation a little bit further. And I'm going to make it a little bit smaller just so I can get this big tree in here. And I think that looks really good. So I'm going to double click that to fix that transformation down. Now you'll see that the background of this tree image isn't the same color as the background of this peachy pink image. And that means that the background in this tree image isn't completely white. So before we go any further, we want to make that white background of those foggy trees completely white. That's going to make our lives a lot easier when it comes to blending these images later. So to do that, we're going to go to image and adjustments, and we're going to look at levels. We're going to look at this histogram here. I'm going to bring the, the blacks in to make it the blacks a little bit darker to make them stand out a little bit further. And I'm going to bring the whites in here until that white background of the trees starts to become invisible against that background of the pink. And you can see as I adjust this, that it's starting to disappear. So around about there looks good to me, maybe a touch further. If this doesn't work properly, you can also go to image adjustments and then go to selective color and you can remove some of the blacks out of the image. So I can adjust this red to remove the blacks or I can also go to the uh, blacks and or rather the whites and I can remove the blacks as well to make it as light as possible so it's a white background and then we can see the outlines of these trees. So I'm going to select that and now we know that we have a good overlay and these trees are going to stand out against this background. The reason I chose these trees and you'll get this Photoshop file so you can do the same. The reason I chose these trees is because they're on a white background and rather than going in and cutting them out or individually like I did for the, the portrait of this lady, instead what I've done is I've just chosen a background where I can, I know I'm going to be adjusting the exposure, I know I'm going to get creative here, I don't have to stick to specific colors, I don't have to follow any rules, so I can make that white really, really, truly white, overexposed white, and then that background is going to disappear and it's going to sit in this layer much easier and make our life much simpler too. Carrying on from there, I'm going to right click on this layer mask of this lady and I'm going to apply layer mask and that is going to apply that layer mask so that I no longer have to worry about it and the image is going to be completely cut out. So if I remove both of these backgrounds, you, all you see here is this lady and there's no layer mask sitting on top anymore. So let's carry on and I am going to go ahead and if I hit command or control on a Windows computer, command on a Mac, if I hit command and then I select that layer thumbnail, 
what it's going to do is it's going to cut out the selection of that lady. So now everything that's selected is this lady's profile and I can then go from there and over to the tree layer, and this is where it starts to get a little bit more interesting. I can go over to the tree layer and then I can apply a layer mask by clicking on this icon here. And now what's happened is we only see these trees where they overlap with that lady's body. We can add more trees back in later, but that's the first step. We're getting close to finishing this now, and I want to merge these two photographs together so you can see both parts. Currently, you can really only see her profile, and that's because it's a silhouette photograph and it's hard to see some of the details in her. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna to go to Image and Adjustments and Brightness and Contrast, and I'm gonna bring the brightness all the way up. And then as I hit OK, you can see a lot more of her details. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this image for the trees. I'm gonna hold Command, select it again. And now I'm only looking at this area of the photograph. And when I go back to this lady and I create a new layer mask by going to layer and layer mask, and I'm gonna leave this on reveal all. And then I take a brush by pressing B or selecting the brush over here and ensuring that this is set to black and white. And you can see it's set to 0000000. zero, 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 zero. By ensuring this and that my brush is actually going to be black, I can paint over her hair. And it's only going to do it on her hair because that's the area that's selected. And I can remove her hair and reveal those trees. So if I remove the selection there, that looks okay, but it really doesn't deal with the intricacies of this photograph. First of all, we're cutting out part of the trees here and we're not really blending it very well in the middle of the face and also the top of the hair. So we're gonna zoom in and we're gonna do some finer details. So by selecting this top layer of the hair, you can see that the white in that photograph is being revealed. So we're gonna take a white brush again, select B, Make sure you're selecting the layer mask here. Selecting the white brush, I'm gonna make that brush a little bit smaller. Make sure it's on white down here. You can switch between the two by hitting X. And I'm gonna paint some of these trees back in. You can see I've gone a little bit too far here, so I can hit X again, and I'm gonna remove it. But I've got a pretty hard brush edge on this. In fact, it's completely hard at 100%. I'm gonna make it really soft by bringing it down to 30%. And then I can just brush in parts here to make that a soft edge on the trees. Then it's not quite as severe Now I want to work at the top of this hair because you can see if I go ahead and I hit command or control and then select the layer that has her body on it, you can see that the hair and the trees at the top aren't really overlapping very well. I want to get some of the shape of her hair at the very top of the image. So to do that, I've selected her body and then I'm going to go to select an inverse selection. So now it's selecting everything that it wasn't selecting before. And if I touch this top layer, so where the, uh, the trees are being masked, because it's the tree image that I want to mask. And if I want to go ahead and add that back in, I need to select a black brush, or add this background back in, and I can go around that there. So we've got that shape again, which makes it look a lot better. And now it's time for the finishing touches. We have this line that goes across her face and it doesn't look very good. What we want to do here is between these images is I want to have another brush stroke that goes across here and removes some of this line to blend them into each other. The best way to do this that I found is to go back onto her profile image, the lady copy layer here, select the layer mask, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select a white brush 
and we're going to go and add some of that detail back in just like so so we're bringing out her hair now now we have less of an obvious line but we do still have an issue where there is a very clear line in here now that we've removed that line that goes diagonally across her head by adding in some of this black detail from her hair what we're going to do instead now is we're going to flip that color around so it's now going to be a black brush and that is going to be adding the trees back into the photograph but we're going to go for a really soft brush so we're going to bring the softness all the way up and the hardness all the way down to zero and i'm going to make it quite a big brush too and what this will allow me to do is if i'm very careful do a soft blend between the two images and there we have a soft blend between those two images you need to be careful not to get too close to the edge of that photograph with the trees on it otherwise you will start to introduce that line again and it all just depends on where you put that image in the first place you might actually want to bring it further over her face so we don't have that line at all and you can completely wash it out I like how this is done though because it sets up the shape of the bottom of her hair and it also ties into the shape at the very top with some of the shape of how her hair curves around I see that there is a little bit here that needs to be tidied up still and you can see the shape here of the image that's beneath it and I want to actually get some of the hair in, the, in this photograph so you can see it is actually the shape of hair so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this tree image which is what we're going to be working on because this is what's standing out in the photograph that's the part we want to remove so it has to be that tree image I'm going to select the layer mask I'm going to have the brush on black which is going to remove and you can see that because if you have a look in the white area that's the part we can see and the black area we can't the black is going to remove and as I go around this you'll see that quite easily I can remove the shape of that image so we have the top of her hair here now now that's done I'm going to zoom out and we can inspect the hair that looks pretty cool to me I really like that the only thing I might want to do is clean up this brush line down here you can see that we, we still have this little bit of line here so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take this tree layer or rather this hair layer I'm going to put it into white and a brush and that's going to add some of that darkness back in and we see a little bit of the brush down here it doesn't look great from where I did it before because it's, it's actually a bit of a hard edge so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add in some of her hair at the base there and then I'm going to remove this bit of tree so let's go back to the tree layer and if I switch from white to black while on this tree layer I can remove that little bit of tree that sticks out at the bottom and then it's just a case of making sure that everything merges the way you'd like it to and that's a pretty cool effect the only thing that I would do next is I would probably go and I'd change this background color so we currently have a color fill but I think I would rather have probably um, a gradient background I like this black and white so I'm going to select black and white gradient but this is going black to clear so I'm going to change it to black to white hit OK and then OK and then we don't have to worry about seeing this color background and there we have two photos merged into one using a double exposure there is a lot of trial and error involved in this process don't expect to pick this up in the first go it can take a little while I've actually edited this image a few times but if you put the work in you can get some great results so that's how to create a double exposure in Photoshop thanks for watching